Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we are going to have a look at distributor injection pump type, pressure buildup, and pressure distribution. How the VE type or the distributor type injection pump vary fuel volume and develop fuel pressure. Well, this is the distributor injection pump distributive head. We call it a distributive head. As you can see, this is for a four cylinder engine. There are four delivery valve outputs. So high pressure from the injection pump will be taken out to each cylinder depending on the firing order of the cylinders. And if you watch closely, distributor type injection pump have letters that are marked on it. The letters will tell you the sequence by which cylinders receive power and it will dictate which firing order to be followed. For example, right here we have A. This goes to cylinder number one, this high pressure line from this tower, high pressure line will be connected to cylinder number one and it is followed by B. This will be going to cylinder number three for one, three, four, two firing. And right here we have a C. And finally, right here we have a letter D. So depending on the firing order, one, three, four, two. This is how the high pressure lines are going to be connected. And in a distributor type injection pump, fuel will be turned on and off by a solenoid switch. Right here we have a solenoid switch that receives battery power. It is receiving electricity from the ignition terminal of uh, the ignition switch, from IG terminal of the ignition switch. When you turn the ignition key on, electricity will be sent to this and that will allow fuel to pass from the injection pump into the pumping unit. Right here, there is a cylinder. Right there, there is a cylinder. In here, this is where the pumping is going to take place. Fuel will be allowed to enter this chamber only when the solenoid valve is open. Otherwise, if the solenoid valve is closed, there is no fuel that is going this way and getting admitted into this cylinder. So the solenoid valve is the one that is going to turn on and off fuel supply to the injection pump high pressure chamber. Otherwise, if this is turned off, there is no fuel supply. There is no fuel supply to this chamber means there is no fuel output. So fuel injection will stop. Now let's go ahead and see how pressure is developed. Pressure is developed by this plunger. This is a plunger of a, a four cylinder injection pump. There are slits. These slits are called intake passages, intake ports. Are. These are the intake ports. And there is a central drilling. That central drilling is connected to this passage. This is called the distribution port. And 180 degree back to this, there is a groove. This is called pressure equalization groove. We will see what it does. And following this central drilling, if you go down again, right here, below here, you will see there is a spill port. A spill port is there. Right here. This is a T connection. This and these are called the spill port and they are connected to the central drilling, they are connected to the distribution port. Now the idea is, look, this will be inserted in here, this will be inserted in here, and when the plunger is moving down, fuel will be entering the high pressure chamber, and when the plunger is going up, it will pressurize the already admitted fuel and send it to one of these towers depending on the firing order. It will send it to one of those stars. So this plunger will undergo two types of motion. One is reciprocatory motion. The other one is revolution. It will rotate or revolve and it will reciprocate. So this is how it is done. It will undergo two type of motion. It will reciprocate, it will rotate. Now, let's say on the downward stroke, when this plunger is moving out of the distributive head, one of the inlet port will align to this passage, to the solenoid passage. The solenoid passage is a, a slit. When we remove this, there is a solenoid passage, there is a slit. You see, there is a passage right in there. So, let's say when, when the plunger is moving down, one of these inlet ports will align 
to this passage to the feed port and that will allow fuel to be admitted into this central chamber so on the downward stroke one of the inlet port will align with the intake that will allow diesel fuel to get admitted into the high pressure chamber so diesel will get into the high pressure chamber via this intake port then once the plunger has finished its downward stroke it will start moving up when it is moving up simultaneously it is rotating it is revolving now when it is revolving previously the intake valve the intake port was in front of this hole now because it has revolved because it has rotated this solid bar will be in front of the feed passage in front of the feed hole so when the plunger is moving up this solid bar will block the passage and fuel inside the high pressure chamber will then be pressurized by the upward stroke of the plunger so when plunger is moving down inlet will align i don't know if it is visible or not yeah you can see there there is a movement now for example inlet is aligned see inlet has aligned fuel will get admitted into the high pressure chamber and when plunger is moving up again when it is moving up simultaneously it is getting roto rotated so the solid part will now block that passage see there is no passage now passage has been blocked by the solid part further travel of the plunger further upward travel of the plunger will pressurize the diesel fuel that pressurized fuel that pressurized diesel fuel will go through the central drain it will exit through this distribution passage and it will get supplied to one of these towers it will get supplied to one of these towers let's say for example it is turn for cylinder number one so the distribution port will be pointing to cylinder number one direction when cylinder number one is directed with this when it is aligned with the distribution passage the high pressure fuel will then get sent to injector of cylinder number one then what follows the plunger will start downward travel downward motion when it starts downward motion this inlet passage will align with the feed port fuel will be admitted to the high pressure chamber then the plunger will start moving up again when it is moving up this solid part will block the fuel entrance so this high pressure chamber will be isolated from the inlet that will make the plunger to develop pressure as it moving up and then the distribution passage this distribution port previously it was supplied to cylinder number one now it will proceed to supply to cylinder number three so this is how it is done downward stroke of the plunger will suck in fuel downward will allow fuel to be admitted upward will pressurize and fuel and then send it out this distribution port will distribute for just like a distributor rotor on a spark ignition engine distributor it will distribute the diesel fuel depending on the firing order so the plunger's rotation is there that plunger rotation will distribute diesel fuel to every cylinder depending on the firing order so this is how pressure is developed to repeat again plunger is moving down inlet port will align with this passage with the passage from the with the fuel passage inlet port will align with this passage when it is moving down inlet will align fuel will be admitted when it is moving up these metal surfaces will close pressure will be developed and that pressurized diesel fuel will exit through this passage and then it will go to one of the cylinders so this is how suction and discharge is happening now in order to equalize the pressure in each cylinder there is a remaining diesel fuel in this line in this line in this line inside here the inside the distribution passage there are drillings that join this to the central this to the center and all these are joined to the central drilling now pressure inside those it has to be equalized otherwise we will have irregular fuel supply when fuel accelerator is depressed much fuel will be there in these galleries pressurized fuel will be there when the driver let go of the accelerator pedal there is less fuel to be supplied now those pressures they get trapped in here that it has to be equalized for smooth running of the engine and a smooth rpm change the pressure inside every drilling has to be equalized 
that is done by this pressure equalization groove. When the pressure equalization groove comes in contact with the drilling that supply to cylinder number one, the pressure in here will be discharged through this passage. And it will continue because the plunger is rotating, then it will continue to cylinder number three. It will discharge the pressure in here and it will equalize to cylinder number one's internal pressure. So this is why this pressure equalization groove is prepared. It is 180 degree opposite to the distribution port. This is the high pressure distribution port. This is the pressure equalization slope. The idea is the high pressure equalization groove will make sure that every cylinder drilling have equal pressure, equal volume of fuel, so that when the driver accelerates, the acceleration will, fit, will be smooth. Otherwise, if there are different quantity of fuel and if different pressure fuel values are there in these drillings, every time that cylinder receives power, every time that cylinder receives additional fuel injection, the engine RPM will fluctuate. Now that is prevented from fluctuation by this pressure equalization groove. Now, one very crucial task is remaining. How do we control the amount of fuel that is going to be sent to each cylinder? That is done by controlling the position of this ring. This is called the spill ring. The spill ring will sit down here covering the spill port. There are spill ports. Now, the idea is when the spill port is inside the spill ring, pressure will be zero. But when the spill ring comes out of the spill, when the spill port comes out of the spill ring, the high pressure inside the drilling will get discharged. That will stop fuel injection. So fuel injection will be going on only as long as the spill passage is covered by the spill ring. So position of the spill ring dictates how much fuel is to be injected. Let's say, for example, the spill ring is brought down to the lowest position. When the spill ring is brought down, only a slight upward movement of the plunger will uncover the spill passage. See, the spill port is now open. Only a slight movement of the plunger will uncover the spill port. That will stop fuel injection. So this is where only small amount of fuel is injected. Only little amount of fuel is injected if the spill ring is brought down. But if the spill ring is brought up, now fuel injection can continue for a longer period. See, fuel injection can continue for a longer period because the spill ring is now brought a little up. So by simply changing the relative position of the spill ring, we can vary the fuel injection volume. So distributor injection pump control fuel injection volume by simply varying the position of the spill ring. When the spill ring is brought down, fuel injection will only be taking place for a very short period. Only small amount of fuel is going to be injected. But if the spill ring is brought up, the, the reciprocatory motion of the plunger will now have much more injection to do. Because the spill ring has moved up, the spill port will remain covered by the spill ring for a longer period. Longer fuel injection is there. Always remember the stroke of the plunger is constant, but the spill ring position is not constant. The spill ring position is the spill ring position is dependent on the accelerator pedal position and the injection pump governor position. There are lots of linkages. These are linkages. These linkages are to be joined to the spill ring like so. And these are the linkages that are going to control the fuel injection volume. So when the driver is planning to accelerate, for example, when you need additional power, the spill ring will be moved up. This will make the effective stroke of the plunger to increase. The plunger, because the spill ring has moved up, the plunger can now inject fuel for longer period. When the driver let go of the accelerator pedal, the spill ring will go down. Because the spill ring has moved down, the fuel injection will be going on only for a brief moment now because the spill ring has moved down. When the spill ring is moving up, fuel injection will increase, injection volume will increase so that engine will accelerate. When the spill ring is moving down, fuel injection will commence only for a little period and uh, that will cause the engine speed to decrease. So this is how fuel injection volume is controlled 
in a distributor type injection pump. And by looking at the number of intake ports, you can decide, you can know for how many cylinders this injection pump is, this injection pump plunger is designed. For example, we have four intake ports, which indicates that this plunger is for a four cylinder engine. If there are six intake passages, it means the plunger is designed for six cylinder engine. So this is the pumping plunger. The plunger is always reciprocating and rotating at the same time. And by rotating, it will distribute fuel to each cylinder depending on the firing order. And by reciprocating, it will develop pressure and suction. When it is going down, it will suck fuel into the chamber. Fuel under feed pump pressure will be supplied into the chamber. When plunger is moving up, it will pressurize it and uh, push it through the discharge. And that discharge will distribute to every cylinder. This is how a distributor type injection pump develop pressure and this is how fuel volume is controlled. Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you regarding how the distributor type injection pump operates. If you find this video helpful and if you like what has been presented, please smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, do consider subscribing, turn on notifications so that you will be the first to get notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.